Good morning and welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Kendra Sakamoto and I'm one of the librarians here at West Vancouver Memorial Library. Uh, I recognize that today we are all in different places. I would like to acknowledge that for those of us on the North Shore, we are on the traditional ancestral and unceded territories of the Squamish, Tsleil-Waututh and Musqueam nations. Um, if you are uncertain as to which traditional territory you reside on, I encourage you to visit whose.land to learn more about the traditional territories on which you reside. As I reflect on this day, the uh, National Day for Truth and Reconciliation, I am inspired by the Coast Salish peoples who have been the careful caretakers and stewards of these lands and waters since time immemorial. I am personally so incredibly grateful to live in this beautiful place. Um, today we commemorate the National Day for Truth and Reconciliation. Today is a day for learning and for reflection. Let us all acknowledge the devastating and lasting impacts that the residential school system had on the children that attended these schools. These impacts continue to be felt among Indigenous communities across Canada. As we all work towards reconciliation, we each have a role to play. And we are all at a different place in this journey, but we are in it together. And I invite you to visit the library um, and our website for numerous resources to help you on this journey. Today, we are honored to be joined by Chief Janice George from the Squamish Nation, who will offer a traditional welcome to this place. Chief Janice is the hereditary chief of the Squamish Nation. She is a trained museum curator, an educator, and a master weaver. Chief Janice co-founded the Lehen Out Weaving House to share the teachings and practices of traditional Coast Salish wool weaving. She co-authored the book, Salish Blankets, Robes of Protection and Transformation, Symbols of Wealth. Chief Janice um, recently gave a TED Talk called The Spirit Moves Like a Storm, and I encourage you to find that on YouTube. It is very powerful. Welcome, Chief Janice. Tenoyap in Sequato, I is chop tenoyap. I is chop tenoyap. Jabhemi SM Kushaman Sna, Tenachan Plas Nak as Kahokmish Ukumio, Almanacht in Squalowin. Almanacht in Squalowin, I'm here with a respectful heart. And I just said peace to each and every one of you. Peace to every one of you here today. So I just want to welcome you um, to view this on. Salish territory, on Squamish territory. I'm so honoured to be here to welcome you, and especially today when we think about our beautiful cedars in our territory. Our territory is so important to us, and it always has been, and we know the history of our territory, and we've been told from the beginning of time. When I think about our cedars, our our all of our land, but our cedars, how sacred it is to us and how our elders have told us that when we are puzzled, when we are sad, when we need some answers, when we need to look within for answers, we go and sit up against the cedar tree. So you sit up against the cedar tree and the answers will come. The help that you need will come. The energy that you need will come to you. So I feel like um, it's so important to know that, especially when we go out into the forest, because our ancestors are there with us. The, our DNA is in the trees. What a powerful thought when we go into the forest. So I just welcome you and um, encourage you to think about the ancestors and and feel that connection yourself you can have that connection as well so i encourage you to do that and um and uh honor those ancestors knowledge in that way Osiam. thank you janice for that very very beautiful welcome to this territory um, so today we are um, very honoured to be joined by Katlia Lafferty, who was our climate writer in residence earlier this year, and um, as well as Elder Jeff Welch from the South Nation. Um, Jeff Welch is a single father, grandpa, and South Nation band member living on reserve. Jeff committed his life 13 years ago to becoming a traditional knowledge keeper for his respective South family, learning and teaching Indigenous education as an Indigenous role model in School District 62. 
Uh, Jeff also facilitates traditional drum making workshops for organizations interested in learning his teaching. And Jeff, on occasion, does guest speaking at the University of Victoria. Um, Kat Leah Lafferty is an author and activist from the Yellow Knives Dene First Nation. She's the author of Northern Wildflower, Land, Water, Sky, which just won the Northwards Book Award for 2021. Um, and her novel that was just released, This House is Not a Home. Katlia is in her final year of the Juris Doctor in Common Law and Indigenous Legal Orders with the University of Victoria. And of course, earlier this year, Katlia served as the inaugural climate writer in residence at West Vancouver Memorial Library. Um, and much of her work that she did with us, including her blogs, are still available on our website. So I encourage you to check those out. Uh, welcome, Katlia. All right, so Katlia, it's so good to see you again. Um, last time I was together with you was right at the end of your residency with us, and we had the opportunity to go out to um, the traditional South territory with Elder Jeff Welch from the South Nation, who took us cedar harvesting. And uh, today we're going to get to see a little bit about that process. Do you want to uh, let us know what we're going to what we're in for? Yeah, so we went out into the forest following Jeff, and he showed us how to honor the cedar tree, how to choose out what cedar tree we will be selecting and um, requesting that we um, utilize and harvest the bark from the cedar tree in a culturally appropriate way through proper protocol um, of the territory. And so we're just going to see that process from start to finish in this video. Great. All right. And uh, here we go. Uh, hello, Esquichel. Good day. Um, my name is Jeff Welch. I'm a traditional knowledge keeper for my respective South Nation family. I've uh, worked in the school district 62 for 12 years as an indigenous role model teaching indigenous education. Um, my family, uh, my mother is Karen George of Salk Nation. My grandmother is Sarah Daisy George of Salk Nation. Her mother was Mary George of Salk Nation. My grandfather was Chief Eddie George of Salk Nation. His father was Harry George of Songhees Nation. I have uh, family at Songhees. I also have family at Patchidat Nation, uh, stemming from my uh, great, or uh, from my granny Ida Jones. Hi, um, CM. Thank you. What I'm going to do uh, now is is offer a, a, an acknowledgement to the possible. Uh, ancestral spirits that might inhabit uh, this tree. Uh, we believe that uh, when our an when our ancestors have passed over, they can inhabit every everything uh, alive and and even rocks. Um, so uh, we acknowledge by leaving some medicine, which is traditionally sage and or cedar, sometimes wrapped together in a bundle like this one. So what I'll do is I'll uh, I'll take a little bit off and offer, offer it uh, to the ancestors at the base of this tree. Uh, sometimes it's offered as in a smudge form, sometimes it's offered like this in, in a medicine form just at the base of the tree. Um, some, some nations like Cree, Cree nations like to uh, bundle it in a little cloth sack and, and hang it uh, from a branch sometimes. Um, so I'm going to give an offering right now to our ancestors, acknowledging that we'd like to take some of this beautiful cedar bark. And it's important that when you're doing this, you, you have good thoughts in your mind and in your heart um, to do it in a, in a, in a good, uh, respectful way. Cedar in our culture is known as the, as the tree of life. 
Um, it supplies uh, many, many different uh, things to our people since time immemorial. Uh, the bark, like what we're going to be harvesting today, used for creating things like my hat or uh, cedar rope, which I'll, I'll do a demonstration for you a little bit later. Uh, also, uh, harvesting the wood, of course, to create our, our, our big houses uh, or ceremonial masks, uh, uh, paddles. Um, the bark is even used uh, to create our, our ceremonial clothing. So we harvest in a very sustainable way uh, and usually on, uh, on the south side of the tree where the, there's uh, fewer branches uh, we can get a nice long strip without it breaking off too soon. Um, so we'll, we'll harvest one strip about the width of uh, two hands. Uh, that way the, the tree will live to be many, many more years after this harvest. They, these red cedars can live as long as a thousand years. Um, uh, modern archaeologists uh, look for these, uh, 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 look for old trees with uh, cedar that's been peeled. They're called uh, archaeological, um, uh, it's archaeological evidence of our, our former uh, past presence. Um, of our peoples so uh, we're gonna harvest one strip and then we're gonna uh, prep it while it's still fresh and wet here it's much easier to prep and clean when it's fresh uh, uh, we'll be uh, taking the outside bark off of it to get to the nice uh, wet bark on the inside and we'll show you that demonstration as as we go along here the only time that we would ever harvest all the bark off of our tree is of course if we're harvesting the whole tree for our, our various many uses. It's even used as a medicine. Um, branches like you see here, uh, they, they would be used like I said in combination with sage for smudging. They'd also be used for cleansing, uh, uh, cleansing off various objects or homes or uh, canoes uh, that are newly created before they go out into the open ocean. They're, they're brushed down with these branches in combination with smudging to, to clean out any negative uh, uh, energies that may be present. Okay, we're gonna start harvesting, peeling that uh, strip of cedar. We start by cutting a vertical line uh, uh, high up off of the root because we don't want to get close to the root. This tree is going to live for many more years after we make this harvest. It's also, uh, uh, it's May, the middle of May right now, close to the middle of May. This is the time of year uh, to harvest while the sap it covers uh, nicely with the sap so it protects it from the elements for many, many more years. So I'll start making my vertical cut. Now we make a cut up to start the strip. If you want to feel underneath this, it's very wet. Lots of water there. The sap running. The tool that you're using, what would that traditionally have been made of? Stone tools. ancestors used to harvest uh, planks for instance to build our big houses 
from standing trees using wedges and cedar rope uh, usually from an old growth uh, a tree where the grain runs um, quite straight so they peel off uh, really nice and, and easy nice thick planks so we want to get the start of this got the, the start of it we want to grab it and pull wow. and it'll pull right up to a branch and then it'll break off you give it a tug to break it off okay, let's go off to the side a little bit there. There we go. <laughs> I just can see him. Thank you for your help. Wow. <laughs> Very wet, eh? Yeah. Wow. So this this uh, spot for the life of its tree will remain there, and our descendants for many generations when they come up into this territory to to do harvesting they'll see this for many generations to come to see our former presence yeah. just like we see theirs um, our ancestors so what we're going to do is uh we can uh, all work together to peel this outside bark off to get to the beautiful inner bark okay. Mm -hmm. wow. That's the usable bark. Yeah. How long does this close-up usually take? That depends. Sometimes you get lucky and you can get a uh, get a hold of a piece, a really big piece, and it'll come right off. Yeah. So it depends. How you use the knife for this? Uh, what you want to do is you want to bend the inner bark. Mm -hmm. And then you want to use the knife to to just gently peel off all these. This guy's here, right? Yeah. And also this darker stuff. Dark. Okay. Yeah. So peel and bend. This is pretty satisfying, actually. Yeah. When you get a good piece. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can see how much labor goes into uh, creating different cedar bark creations yeah. right from harvesting to creating a hat for instance there's a lot of a lot of work that goes into this when we're done stripping this what we'll do is we'll roll it up careful not to fold it and uh, we'll tie it into a bundle and um, dry it whole in preparation to use for uh, uh, later time um, and then it's uh, soaked again when it's later to be used and stripped into various different sizes depending on what it is that you're gonna create from it mm -hmm. so mats you'd want uh, larger strips depending on the size of the mat that you're gonna be creating um, hats about as width as your paint the width of your pinky uh, cedar rope for uh, fishing you want quite fine strips for a smaller fishing line or uh, if you're making cedar rope quite thicker strips it's like a multiple yeah it's many different uses i never realized that that you could do so many things with it yeah you know what? They do use it for hair on traditional masks. Oh, nice. As well as real human hair. 
It does look fairly like hail. Yeah. Yeah. So when you peel off the ground, mm -hmm. is it normal that the I would gets, it stays yeah. on there? Yeah, it's okay. Or the more skilled you get, the less you leave behind. It just depends on the the, the tree and how much sap is what we're running through it or how much water is running through it. Yeah. Looks like this is a good time a good one to peel. It's peeling pretty easily. It just really drives home how disconnected we are oh. from, from the land. Mm -hmm. Totally. Like, it's just, it's just not part of society anymore. Mm -hmm. I feel so connected to Everything is just so quick and easy. I feel yeah. so I feel very connected to Sweden. Oh. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're bound to lose some as you peel. Yeah. And is there a proper way to kind of dispose of all your leftovers? Usually, if you're not going to use it for a fire starter, for instance, mm -hmm. then you put it back in the bush to be reclaimed yep. with our with our fish. Really Any parts that, that we don't use, it gets put back into the ocean. Yeah. To be reclaimed by all the other creatures. Who taught you to do this? I'd learned uh, a lot since I was a child from my from my grandfathers, and my aunties, and my grandmas. I got um, A lot of mostly what I've learned is uh, since working in the school district uh, 62 as an indigenous role model. 12 years I've been doing it. 12 years ago, I, I committed to becoming a traditional knowledge keeper for my respective Tsalk Nation family, which means I'm, I, I've committed to learning all I can about our traditions and culture, and to then uh, hold that knowledge and teach it for anybody that wants to learn it, especially to those in uh, School District 62, where I work, like I said, as an indi indigenous, indigenous role model. I also do uh, presentations on occasion for the University of Victoria, and uh, yeah, it's, uh, a lot of the knowledge that I learned has been over the past 12 years since I committed to becoming a knowledge keeper. I learned from other Indigenous role models in the in the school district. Everybody usually specializes in in one or more things that they teach. And so uh, um, that's where I, I get most of my teachings from. I basically teach indigenous education uh, of all, all sorts of uh, knowledge. Uh, I start usually with cedar talks for my presentations, but I leave the questions open for anything traditional or cultural of interest to the students that if I can answer their questions, I, I do my best to answer it for them. I have a very wide knowledge of uh, uh, everything to do with our culture and traditions. Yeah. What happens when this happens? That's okay. You can just peel it. Okay. Peel it off. Yeah. yeah. It's important to do it with love in your heart, oh, yeah. good thoughts in your in your mind. Be careful the other hand. I have very good thoughts. <laughs> awesome. I'm thinking about getting socks for rice beans today. That's a good thought. <laughs> <laughs>
that we we learn our our old ways, our old teachings to uh, acknowledge. Remember to acknowledge those uh, ancestors that give us these gifts that of cedar that ancestors we believe uh, inhabit our trees and everything around us including the stones um, so it's it's important as a knowledge keeper to, to learn these teachings and to 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 uh, teach them to all that wanna uh, all that wanna listen um, Using cedar is very healing, prepping it. Um, it's important to have good thoughts in your mind and heart. Like I said earlier, when you're working with cedar, it will show in your work, uh, in your creations that you create from it. If you're, if you're getting frustrated, it's important to, to stop and take a break if if your if your uh, cedar isn't uh, um, if if you're having a tough time uh, working your cedar bark, it means you need a need to take a break. It's not ready yet to be used. Those energies all go into your creations. very important to follow proper protocol when gathering cedar because uh, we like I said earlier we believe that our ancestors when they passed on uh, uh, inhabit things like uh, uh, all living things including uh, inanimate objects uh, like stones and what have you so it's important that we acknowledge those ancestors uh, who are giving themselves to us for our creations um, it's important to not lose those teachings uh, it's important to teach them to to the to the youth in hopes that they retain that knowledge and never lose it and they'll grow up to teach it as well or maybe even grow up to become a knowledge keeper to uh, to learn and, and teach their their uh, traditions and culture mm -hmm. so have you noticed any changes in the land and water or on the forest floor uh, growing up and until now in terms of maybe seeing, witnessing climate change? Um, not that I can uh, think of offhand, although uh, I do teach about uh, some of the things that we don't have access to anymore for our traditional tools due to over uh, over harvesting or clear cutting of our forests for instance our uh, our paddles traditionally we used yew wood to create those paddles it's known as one of the hardest woods in our traditional territory but due to over harvesting clear cutting um, it's getting very hard to to find the uh, amount of wood that we would need to create enough paddles even for one uh you wood paddles even for one canoe mm. so we've adopted uh, the use of yellow cedar which is uh but more dense harder heavier wood out of the two cedars the red and the yellow so i guess in keeping with the Reconciliation means to me, well, it's, it's, it's about 
sharing and and uh, in our different cultural ways, uh, non-indigenous and indigenous. It's important that we live together, uh, respecting each other's teachings and learning from each other. Um, this, uh, I very much believe that that uh, it's important to share our traditions and and traditional territory as a multicultural uh, country um, because I believe that the world is meant for all to share so I, I highly believe in, in that, that it's important to share all we can uh, especially in sustainable uh, sustainable ways so even harvesting our our various different foods um, you may have heard that we don't have a hunting season uh, per se so some of us First Nations that that live out of uh, community uh, that live mostly in the in the uh, in the uh, populated areas where uh, there, there isn't access to grocery stores to acquire supplemental foods. Um, they harvest all year round. So, uh, uh, but me, for instance, and some of my Salk family, we go by uh, uh, since we have access to uh, uh, stores and and. Uh, um, other available foods will harvest in a sustainable way by harvesting during a hunting season um, so that uh, we have um, those uh, animals that we may be harvesting if we harvest them in a sustainable manner we have to think uh, seven generations ahead for our for our for our families to be able to have access to those same same uh, animals and if if they're harvested at the rate that they are um, we're not going to have anything left especially when it comes to to harvesting our ocean foods I I highly believe that um, our oceans can't sustain commercial harvesting like they currently are um, it's uh, it's depleting our our oceans and our salmon uh, much faster than they can replenish and so uh, harvesting our fish we harvest in a living in a in a populated community we harvest usually in a, a, fishing season as well unless it's uh, to do with harvesting salmon from our rivers we, we harvest that sustainably as well in the fall um, yeah it's just very important for for us to uh, think about our seven generations ahead of us mm -hmm. we need to leave think think of them and leave some for them. Okay, so uh, that was our experience last May when uh, we went out to harvest the cedar. So Elder Jeff very graciously gifted all of that cedar to Fatlia and myself. And the cedar has to cure for a full year before we can use it. So here's a, a small piece. So you can see what, it, what it's looking like at this point. We're about uh, five months post harvest. Um, and then earlier in the year, Elder Jeff had gifted us some cedar that was already ready. So here's a piece so you can see when it's been fully cured and it's been cut. So this is now all ready to use um, in projects. 
So Katlia, do you have any plans for, for your theater? Well, I have quite a lot of different um, ceremonial pieces that I've collected over the years, whether that be rocks or sage or sweet grass. And now I've added cedar to the to the mix. And I'm going to keep it in a very safe location where I'm just going to use that uh, to energize me and to remember where I live now in the Kwangan territory and um, recollect on that day. And just keep that as a, as a keepsake, really, um, because I'm not aware of how to use uh, cedar in ways for weaving and things like that. So maybe one day what I'll do is I'll go back to Elder Jeff and ask him to teach me more. But for now, I'll have it on my mantle as a ceremonial um, offering and um, just to have in my home, which I will cherish. So cedar is not something that um, you traditionally use in your culture. Um, so how was this experience of harvesting cedar for you? Well, the day is it, interesting because when you're going out and harvesting cedar, you really have to just immerse yourself in the forest and, and kind of try to just be as one uh, with nature and, and where you're at and where you're standing you're standing among giants and um that day was rainy and and cold a little bit and um at some points I kind of wanted to just bundle it up and you know go home so it it really goes to show that there's an entire process around doing this that is not to be taken lightly it's it's very serious work and a lot goes into it a lot of preparation a lot of time like you said it takes a whole year for the cedar to um, you know, go through that cycle. And then there's a ceremonial aspect and um, just humbling ourselves to that. And it's, it's very spiritual process. And I, I would encourage anyone who's living among the cedar in, in BC to um, reach out to their local elders or their local knowledge keeper to go and experience that and have that experience. Cause it's hard to put into words um, what it's like out there when you're going step by step through the process and I mean it, we we were we were scraping we were on our knees trying to scrape the cedar and that that was a long process and it was also something that we worked on together so it wasn't just one person doing the work it was kind of a group effort and so it's really great to be able to do that especially with family and friends and learning as you go yeah thank you um, so on this day for, you know, National Day for Truth and Reconciliation, um, this is such an important day and I'm so grateful that it's, it's been made, you know, a national day. Um, and I think so much of, of reconciliation for non-Indigenous people is to learn about the traditions and the cultures, certainly of all Indigenous people across Canada, but especially um, on the territory where you're living. You know, what were the traditions and what are the traditions and the practices of the people who still live in this area and are the stewards of this land? Um, I was so grateful to have this experience with Elder Jeff and to be able to take my family on that experience, was, you know, once in a lifetime. Yeah. Um, but I would love to hear from you, you know, what does reconciliation mean to you? Well, you know, reconciliation, well, the whole phrase truth and reconciliation, I think we're still at the truth. We're still very much trying to decipher and figure out what the truth is and, and bring that to light so that we can eventually move forward to reconciliation. I don't think that we're even close to reconciling right now. Um because there's still a lot of hidden truths, there's still a lot of truths that are not wanting to be um, recognized um, or exposed um, for what they are. And until that happens, until there's that genuine um, trust that comes out of truth, only then can we move forward to reconcile. And also to the word reconciling is really making right the past wrongs. And for Indigenous people, really, we weren't the ones that did the wrongs, right? We were we were wronged. And so I think that um, there needs to be that understanding as well as it's not up to us to reconcile. Uh, it's up to us to hopefully um, move forward in a good way um, 
and also to consider um, forgiveness, but it's not our job to reconcile anything. And I think that that's where there is some confusion around truth and reconciliation. And it comes from those um, allies and um, the settlers and the colonial mindsets that are, and the policies that have been put in place that have dispossessed us from our homelands and from being able to understand our place-based teachings um, fully, um, only then uh, will we be able to get to reconciliation. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah and this is such a challenging, um, it's a journey. You know, it's, it's a continual journey for all of us, whether we've lived here for generations or we've just moved here. Um, you know, it, it is a continuous journey. And I think anyone who's, who's here today and, and just even watching this video, that's already a step in the right direction. Definitely, yes. It, it shows the earnest um, respect and the, the effort to get to that point. And that's what matters most is... Um, not so much, you know, um, having that guilt, uh, because that that's not going to be useful for anything. Um, but just uh, being being there, um, learning as much as possible, and um, just really going out and and teaching that to others. So among your groups, uh, among your friends and family kind of trying to explain that because it's 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 kind of difficult to explain and it's not up to indigenous peoples either to teach that or explain that um because it's triggering and uh, indigenous peoples have been through a lot of trauma and so um we should not be the ones to be teaching people about the history of so-called canada and uh it's it's up to others to do that homework themselves Thank you. And, um, and on that note, you know, it can be really hard to know where to get those resources and, and how to start this journey. Um, the library is a great place. We have loads of resources. So, you know, check out our website. We have book lists. We have um, book bundles specific for this day. We have, you know, every staff member who would love to help you start on this journey or continue on this journey wherever you are. So please come by the library. Um, and also, Kat Leah has a new book that you know just came out, and it's called This House Is Not a Home. It's a beautiful, beautiful book, and it really, really touches on um, the lasting effects of colonization that, you know, Indigenous peoples are still feeling right now at this very moment. Um, so this book is, is very poignant at this time, and so I encourage everyone to read it. We do, of course, have it at the library, um, so please check that out. Thank you so much, Katlia, for inviting me to come on this cedar harvesting journey with you. Um, to Elder Jeff, I am I'm so eternally grateful, and thank you both. And I wish everyone um, a very amazing day of reflection on this National Day for Truth and Reconciliation. Masi Cho, Kendra, thank you so much for everything. Thank you, Katlia.